so well represented in this book. AI generated romance. It's happening, I've actually invested in it. Very, very Wattpad. <laughs> Every nice moment. Why are you telling me that? Why? Hello, 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 and welcome back or welcome to my first ever reading vlog. This is so exciting. 2023 for me has been a year where I've decided that I'm gonna start uploading more. It's something that I really enjoy. It's something that I really enjoyed doing, but I did it very sporadically and just sort of, oh, I kind of want to do a video where I do this and then uploading it. Whereas in 2023, I'm trying to stick to more of a schedule. I'm trying to kind of plan things out. I also made the decision that in 2023, I would post more booktube content because I have been a great lover of booktube for about two years. I am obsessed with it. And I've done a few over the time of my channel anyway. I think most of them are deleted because I go back and I delete a lot of my old videos when I decide that they're just too cringe to cope with. But this year I've definitely been doing more of a focus on it. But in this reading vlog, I decided to pick up two of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. I knew that I wanted to kind of get through her backlist because I do really love her as an author. So I thought I'd pick these two up and make a little video of it. So I decided to start with Maybe In Another Life and One True Loves. These are the two that were released in 2015 and 2016. That's definitely wrong. Oh no, they were. This is 2015 and this is 2016. So we'll just quickly go through the books before we start. And I started off with Maybe In Another Life. So this story is about Hannah and Hannah is 29 and she's decided to return to her hometown that she left when she was quite young. The rest of her family moved to London when she was quite young. So she kind of only really had her best friend and her best friend's family. And a boy. On her first night out back in Los Angeles, Hannah has to make a decision on whether she stays out or goes back home with her friend. And we see her life unfold as it splits into two different timelines. So I picked this one up because it's not just a romance, it's also got this kind of really interesting parallel story to it. But I haven't heard many reviews from other people on this one. I've actually heard a lot more for One True Loves. One True Loves is, I think, a little bit more popular. I've seen more people discussing it on both Instagram and YouTube. But in this one, we have Emma. Emma falls in love with her high school sweetheart, Jessie, and they spend lots of lovely time as a couple. Then they get married, and a year later, Jessie's in a helicopter crash and is missing, presumed dead. Guess what? He's not dead. But in that time, Emma has grieved him. She's learnt to love again, and she's fallen in love with Sam and got engaged to him. When Jessie calls her, she's got a big decision to make. We've got maybe in another life and we've got one true loves. So, roll the video. Wattpad. It's funny because she just put in a load of exposition right at the start through telling another character something that it was kind of like, mm, but you know, you let her get away with it because it is quite like, it's I suppose cleverly done, but then it just goes, I'd much rather be depicted with my dark brown hair and light green. Oh, oh. that is barely a step up from I swooshed my dark brown hair and blinked my light green eyes. <laughs> I am tall, curvy and white. She is short, thin and black. Taylor, I'm begging you stop with the description words, please. Are you reading any Taylor Jenkins read books at the moment? No. I can't pop that, that's not going to work, I... I'm reading We Are Liars. We, we were? Yeah. Fair, what was the last book I recommended you? I really recommend you Kiki, did I? No. I bought you Kiki and then we both didn't think it was very good. Yeah, that was horrible. So now I should probably get a move on with We Were Liars because I have to do them on and not have to read a book. Sorry, I only want to spin the vlog, I don't really know what- I am about to walk to my grandmother's because I am a model grandchild. I'm going away again tomorrow and I thought because it's such a beautiful sunny day, I'm gonna have a little walk. And I was just thinking to myself, it'd be great if I could read and walk at the same time. And then I was like, wait, audiobooks. <laughs> I'm genuinely so bad with paying attention to things. Like if I'm watching a film or a TV show, I'm gone. That's why I like reading because it's right in front of me. So I have to read it. No one's forcing me to listen. So I just don't listen. But I have just signed up for a little free trial of Scribd to see if I like it. Probably not going to be continuing my subscription after the free trial because I am broke. But for now, I've got my headphones. It is a beautiful sunny day. So I'm going to go and take a little half hour walk and listen to maybe <laughs> My headphones died earlier and I didn't get to read very much as you can see but I'm at the point where she's about to make this decision on whether she gets in the car or whether she goes home 
with someone else and I thought oh, it would be a good time to give an update because this is where it now splits into the two different storylines. I think my opinion so far has definitely been affected by the fact that I hated the narrator of the audiobook, like hated. I don't know, she was very robotic and she made all the male voices be like really jokey and gruff and all the female voices be really high pitched and squealy. I just really really didn't like that and it definitely contributed to the fact, my hair is such a mess, oh my goodness, it definitely contributed to the fact that this book, for me at the moment, I know I'm only 30 pages in, but it feels like an AI generated romance. It feels like someone is put in a load of tropes and it spat out this book. Again I'm only 30 pages in so I'm still willing to give it the benefit of the doubt and keep going. This is what happens when you don't bring enough clothes when you go and visit your boyfriend. Rewind to look that, so. <laughs> okay, so I've reached the point where I do actually care a little bit about this book, which I don't think I was expecting to have on quite so early on, considering I'm on page 77. I'm invested because something has been revealed to us in one timeline that isn't revealed in the other timeline, but it's because of the nature of the thing. It means that it's, it's also happening in the other timeline, but she doesn't know about it but we know because we've seen it happen in the other timeline so i'm kind of interested in how that will play out hannah just feels like a caricature of a person and her only personality trait is wearing a high bun and liking cinnamon rolls and okay so maybe she's got a few personality traits it just doesn't feel real i'm not invested in any of the romances because there's different ones and different timelines i also think that nurses shouldn't be flirting with their patients this is not a spoiler i promise but it's not hard to fall asleep once i decide to that's one thing i've always liked about myself it's never hard to fall asleep why why are you telling me that why was that necessary for me to know you can tell me that it's not hard for hannah to fall asleep without going it's not hard for me to fall asleep guys show me don't tell me <laughs> I think what's making me really really actually get into this book is the fact that it's not really about the romance between Hannah and this guy I mean it is but the driving force and like the soul of the book is more about Hannah and Gabby her best friend and it's just it's just so nice to watch them be there for each other when they're going through these really tough times ultimately like they're coming to all of these conclusions about um basically case sera sera and being like life's gonna do what life wants to do but they in both timelines they are there for each other so much and all of these things are changing around them but they are so solid and it's just it's just really nice to read about like i wouldn't say that this book is massively highbrow literary fiction it's not like coming out with extremely intelligent ways of thinking it's not really profound but it's also not pretentious it knows that it's not profound and it's saying it's making these comments about life and fate it's just nice to watch these two girls be in support for each other no matter what it's just i'm just really enjoying that more than anything having a really nice moment where I was really enjoying the conclusions it was coming to. This is a very attractive angle as you can tell. I was really enjoying the conclusions that it was coming to. I was really happy with the way that Taylor Jenkins Reid is presenting not knowing that everything is gonna- you, you don't know if things are gonna be okay or not. It's found a nice balance between just let things happen but also things are gonna be what they're gonna be. And I was really enjoying this moment where these two friends are sat there and they're working things out together. And then one of them says to the other, says to the other, what is it you want out of life right now? Guess what she says? A cinnamon roll. And I can't, 
every nice moment. So I've just finished the very last page of Maybe in Another Life and I think it's gonna be a solid three stars from me because there were bits that I really enjoyed. It's not my favorite book of all time and it's definitely not my favorite Taylor Jenkins read. I'd probably go as far as to say it's been my least favorite Taylor Jenkins read that I've read so far. I don't think she's as good at writing everyday people than she is at writing these celebrities. In Malibu Rising, Carrie Soto, and Evelyn Hugo. She's writing about these celebrities and this inner world of celebrities that she's created and the same in Daisy Jones, I just haven't read it yet. And they're all very interconnected and the characters all feel very, very real in those. And the characters in this, significantly less real. I do stand by my original statement that it does kind of feel like an AI generated romance novel though. She's sat there and she's put in, I want found family, I want second chance romance. And she's got this list of tropes and she's put it in a machine and it's spat out this with a load of exposition. I think this is the same with all these sorts of tropey books, is the fact that they don't feel like they're written for, for the enjoyment of the story or for the, you know, for any sake other than just sort of spitting out a book for mild enjoyment. It had a lot of good thinking points about fate and about different universes and about making choices. And I did really like that, but it was all very, very surface level. I don't know, I did kind of get that vibe from Evelyn Hugo as well, is that all of her takes were good, but they were very, very surface level. And that's why I quite liked Malibu Rising, because I felt like she was saying a lot more with her words. With this, it just sort of felt like, yeah, I know, we can come to that conclusion on our own. You don't need to repeat it in our face multiple times because you've got people saying it in both of the timelines. I don't really think I had a clear favorite between the timelines. They were both all right, they were both okay. They did what they wanted to achieve. I just didn't feel really that connected with the book, which is a shame, but you know, it was an enjoyable read and I did have a good time. If you want something lighthearted and a little bit spiritual, a little bit theoretical, I think you'd probably quite enjoy this. I'm gonna move on to One True Loves. I don't know if I'm gonna start that now or in the next few days. But yeah, three out of five for this one. Guys, I'm 77 pages in. It's happening, I've actually invested in it and this is only one of them, we haven't even got onto the second one yet. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's such a change, like I did not care about the characters until the very end. Actually by the end I wasn't even that bothered, I cared about the characters in the middle of maybe in another life. But with 77 pages in I actually care about these people. I think I might need a bit of a hair wash. So last night I got up to the point what page is it? I got up to page 134 last night and this is the point where we've gone through the two backstories of each of the guys. This isn't spoilers, this is in the description. We've gone through Emma's backstory with both Jesse and Sam and I'm attached to both of them. I'm really happy about it because I wasn't expecting to be. All of the characters seem a lot more real, they seem a lot more fleshed out than in maybe in another life and I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a nice time. I mentioned yesterday that I was invested in both of the romances. I still am. I think I have a favourite but I think that that favourite will make maybe shift as we go through. Another thing that I did want to mention is the fact that obviously Emma believes that she's lost Jessie and she goes through a period of I think two years where she's grieving and that grief is so well represented in this book. It's done so beautifully. It switches to second person to tell it and it was just Oh, it literally, I, it was so beautiful to read. It was such a real description of grief that was just written so beautifully. And this is the Taylor Jenkins reader that I know and love. a few days I've obviously finished One True Loves and I loved it a lot more than maybe in another life. I gave this one four stars and I really really enjoyed it. I don't think it would have ever got five stars because it's not the type of book that I don't think I would give five stars to but that's not to say that it isn't really really beautiful because it is. I mentioned earlier but the description of grief and using the second person 
was so beautiful and it literally got me so invested in this book because I was having a good time I was casually enjoying it and then suddenly it hit me with this beautiful prose I really enjoyed the romance a lot more I felt like I knew the guys a lot better in the other book they just were kind of there to move the plot along whereas in One True Loves they felt like they were actual real life people and I could engage with what they were saying it was actually what those characters would say. I thought it was the perfect level of being emotional and tugging at the heartstrings without being overly traumatic because obviously it's discussing a really serious topic and I know that's something that people just differ on it doesn't mean that a book is better or worse because it engages in serious topics or doesn't it just depends on how well you do them. I gave One True Love four stars and maybe in another life three stars. I don't think that those ratings are very likely to change over time they kind of you know I knew what they were going to be straight after and it's been a little while now and I don't really feel like I need to change either of them I do have another two Taylor Jenkins read books I have forever interrupted and after I do but if you did enjoy this video and maybe want to see this one or you want to see other reading vlogs that are just nothing to do with Taylor Jenkins read then please let me know thank you so much for watching I'm really happy that you stayed all the way to the end to spend all this time with me I'm very very grateful and I hope to see you soon